How many know that he's marvelous? We get ready to go home, lean on somebody and say, he is marvelous. And it's marvelous in I. Oh, Lord.
Bishop Vashtime Redford McKenzie, our supervisor, Dr. Stan McKenzie, and the 10th Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, I would like to welcome you to our virtual Super Summer Convocation Midday Revival. Our preacher for today will be the Reverend Dr. Ronald Slaughter. Sit back, enjoy yourself as the Lord blesses you today. Good afternoon, members of the 10th District. Welcome to Super Summer Convocation 2020. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, Verse 3, do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. So let's join our hearts and our minds together as we come together in unity and pray. Please reverence yourselves where you are. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, maker and creator of life, Thank you for your love today, for your mercy, for your grace, for your favor that you show us and give us even in difficult times that we are living in, such as this pandemic. We pray that you would empower us to be your people, to do your will, to live according to your will and to do what you have assigned our weak hands to do. We come together as a district to pray for healing in this nation, to pray for recovery, to pray for restoration, to pray for prosperity, even in difficult times. We know that as our Lord and Savior, do you do your best handiwork in difficult times. And so now, Lord, we come together to celebrate you And we pray that even in this virtual super summer convocation, that you would spread your love in us, that we might spread your love to each other. Bless our Bishop, Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie. Bless our supervisor, Supervisor Stan McKenzie. Give them the navigational skills that they need to lead this district in a difficult time. And now, as we prepare to celebrate super summer convocation, Breathe in us your words, your will, and your life that we might honor you in spirit and in truth. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The scripture reading comes from John, the 15th chapter, verse 9 through 16, and I'll be reading from the amplified version of God's holy word. The word of the Lord declares, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. This is my commandment, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love, no stronger commitment than to lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. And do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I appointed and placed you and purposefully planted you so that you will go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name as my representative, he may give it to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 10th Episcopal District. 
Welcome, of course, to our virtual Super Summer Convocation. Nobody can do it like the 10th District. That's right, from our leadership, Bishop Vashti McKenzie and Dr. Stan McKenzie, from the YPD, the WMS, the clergy, and the lay, we represent the God Squad. From San Antonio to Austin, from Amarillo to Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Waco, Killeen, and in between, we are the 10th District, and this is us. to be a part of this Super Summer Convocation, where we celebrate our youth, enjoy each other, and journey through worship, word, and praise. And now we have an excellent opportunity to worship through giving. Give to ministries that are helping communities, feeding the homeless, and sharing the word of God. As we navigate through these perilous times, the 10th District remains relevant, relational and continue to revive and restore our churches and the people. Matthew 6 38 says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Help the 10th district continue in ministry and worship by giving to all of our initiatives. You can give a couple of ways. One is through Givelify. Download Givelify and type in 10th District AME Church. The second way to give is through Cash App. Type the Cash App handle dollar sign 10th District AME and give from your heart. We are here for you. We're working for you and we are praying with you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are the giver of all things. And the word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them for your glory and to edify your people. May these gifts bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, rest to the weary and hope to the hopeless. Just as you multiply the offering of fish and the loaves that were freely given to others, we pray that you will multiply these, our offerings, to you and accomplish with them more than we can ever imagine. Lord, we thank you for every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Andre Crouch penned the song, we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. And if ever we needed the word before, we sure do need it now. In these uncertain times, beloved, we are hungry for the living bread. We are thirsting after righteousness. We are seeking the essential things of God that will keep us. I'm talking about keeping us together, keeping us in our right mind, keeping our hearts and keeping us strong. Well, there is a preacher in the house for our Super Summer Convocation Lunch Break Praise. The Reverend Dr. Ronald Slaughter is senior pastor of St. James AME Church in Newark, New Jersey, the shepherd of one church in two locations. And over the past nine years, just over 1,300 souls have been added to the kingdom. 98% of outstanding debt was liquidated and a half million dollars invested in facilities, renovations, and upgrades. Now the church has been real busy acquiring property around the Newark campus and investing over $1.1 million to acquire the properties for its brand new future facility. Pastor Slaughter serves on several boards from prominent seminaries to the state parole board. And according to Pastor Slaughter, God has done all of this to prove that God can use someone who remains a work in progress. He's a husband, father, brother, and friend. Pastor Slaughter firmly believes with all of his heart in Acts 5 and 39. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these people. You will only find yourself fighting against God. Come on into the room. Take a break. It's lunchtime. It's time to hear the Word of God. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows Our Father and our God, how majestic and how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Lord, we bless you and we honor and we thank you for this marvelous and wonderful day that you've created. God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. God, you've been mighty good to us. We thank you for this opportunity to share your unsearchable riches. And God, we give you praise for this opportunity to preach your gospel. Pray now, God, that you would come and stand in my body, think with my mind, talk with my tongue, and say those things in which you desire your people to hear. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, you are my strength and my only redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's children declare, thank God, and said, amen. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We all should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm certainly honored and delighted to have this opportunity to come and share a word from the Lord, certainly to the wonderful and phenomenal Episcopal leadership of the 10th Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Right Reverend Vestine Murphy McKenzie. We give God praise for the 117th elected and consecrated Bishop of African Methodism, certainly uh, to Supervisor Stan McKenzie, both uh, Supervisor Stan and I uh, are natives of the
the sunshine state of Florida. And sisters and brothers, I'm telling you, even in the midst of COVID-19, God is blessing us in a phenomenal way. Uh, we are receiving one of those blessings right now by being able to have Bishop McKenzie for an extended time for another year of Episcopal leadership uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, doesn't she make us proud when she's on CNN before the whole wide world and the way that she leads us with her oratorical gift and her brilliance and her beauty and her spirit all wrapped into one individual. I thank God for Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie and I likewise thank God for Supervisor Stan McKenzie. I bring you greetings from the First Episcopal District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church where we are under the leadership and we are certainly blessed as well to have an extended year. It's something about that class of 2000 and isn't it? They're leaving their mark on the church. No other class can say they had an extended year like the class of 2000. So I bring you greetings from the Right Reverend Gregory Gerald McKinley Ingram. I preside Prelate and our wonderful and dynamic Episcopal supervisor, the Reverend Dr. Jessica Eileen Kendall Ingram, certainly send their love and their regards to the 10th Episcopal District. Well, the bishop has been specific in her assignment uh, that she's given to me, 15 to 20 minutes to preach the gospel. So I'm going to work. Uh, why don't you turn with me uh, to Acts chapter 1. Yes, the first chapter of the book of Acts. I want to concentrate on verses 12 through 14. And the word of God declares from the New International Version, then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of God for the people of God. I want to use for a thought for preaching in these next 15 to 20 minutes these words, making the best out of a bad situation. Making the best out of a bad situation. Winston Churchill, the two-time British Prime Minister from 1940 to 1945, and again, 1951 to 1955, is best known for successfully leading Britain to victory in World War II. Even while the odds, and even when the odds were squarely stacked against him, Churchill refused to give in. One of the latest biographers of Churchill shared that Churchill was able to cope with stress and bad situations by taking afternoon naps. Can you imagine that in the heat of war? In the midst of a war, this brother was able to sleep in the midst of all of that. The biographer also noted, and I'll quote, he avoided stress in the early afternoons by taking an hour-long nap throughout the war. This extended the time he could stay up working until well into the early hours. Sisters and brothers, contrary to what we are experiencing right now in terms of leadership in the United States of America, Winston Churchill had the ability to inspire and motivate his country in the worst of times. Ironically, some of Winston Churchill's most profound speeches and quotes came out during what many perceived were bad situations and bad moments. In terms of danger, Winston Churchill declared, and I quote, one ought never to turn one's back on a threatened danger and try to run away from it. If you do that, you will double the danger. But if you meet it promptly and without flinching, you will reduce the danger by half, end quote. Jesus, sisters and brothers, has been spending an enormous amount of time with his fearful, psychologically shaken, and timid disciples. Jesus' death and crucifixion has shaken the disciples to the core. Jesus, in the text, chooses a place he and the disciples were quite familiar with called the Mount of Olives. We don't figure out where they are hanging out at initially in verses 1 through 11, 
but when we read verse 12 it shares with us that they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives Jesus absolutely loved that place he loved the Mount of Olives many of you Bible readers can recall that during Jesus final week he spent time there teaching according to Mark's gospel chapter 13 he spent the evenings there according to Luke's gospel chapter 21 verse 37 he went there for prayer after the last supper according to Mark chapter 14 verse 26 and he was also there as many of us realize he was arrested in Gethsemane which is near the olive press according to Mark's gospel chapter 14 verse 32 so it should be no shock to anybody it certainly should be should not be a shock to us that Jesus was back sisters and brothers in a very familiar praise place reassuring the disciples and returning back to God from that particular place as some of you could imagine this time with Jesus was not only precious for the disciples it was also encouraging for them they have been wrestling and toiling with this whole notion of the resurrection and the assignment that has been placed before them in between listen carefully tonight listen carefully in between the resurrection and the assignment Peter had to be reinstated spirits had to be revived and Judas had to be replaced let me rewind and say that again in between the resurrection and the assignment Peter had to be reinstated spirits had to be revived and Judas had to be replaced in essence sisters and brothers that suggests to each and every one of us that between our comeback and our assignment there will be some reinstatement some reviving and also some replacing the disciples are trying their best to make the best out of a bad situation I want us sisters and brothers doing this noonday worship to investigate what the disciples do with their time during this season which will involve some stay at home executive orders according to Acts chapter 1 verse number 4. It will require some social distancing from the world and it will also require some isolation on the behalf of the disciples. I don't think you all caught that. It's right there nestled in the text. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. They must practice social distancing they must also practice stay at home orders and they must also deal with isolation I want to move very quickly in the last 10 minutes to the movements of the text you make the best out of a bad situation first of all by using the situation to reflect yes by using the situation to reflect it's captured right there in verse 4 verse 5 and verse 6 as they were in the Mount of Olives listening to Jesus he gives them a specific order to remain in Jerusalem until they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This time with Jesus in the Mount of Olives was very critical for the disciples. Over the last 40 days, sisters and brothers, Jesus has appeared to them and convinced them that he was alive. There was absolutely no doubt that Jesus had survived the horrific scene at Calvary. In the Mount of Olives, they had an opportunity, sisters and brothers, to have a Q&A session. They had an opportunity to have a question and answer session with Jesus. As they are reflecting, let the church shout reflecting. As they are reflecting, which is to give careful thought and consideration about Jesus' instructions to them and their assignment from Jesus they want to know when will the kingdom of God be restored to Israel that's right there in verse 6 and they also want to know how will they accomplish this major assignment in their life as Jesus declares to them in verse number 8 you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In other words, sisters and brothers, uh, the answer to the disciples' question was caught up right there in the text. The answer to restoring the kingdom, Jesus says the answer is you. 
and then he leaves them in verse 9 and verse 10 did y'all see what happened in the text I know I'm moving hastily and my time is limited this afternoon but don't miss what happens in the text there is reflection they are having careful thought and consideration and reflection leads to recapitulation which is the summary and summarizing of verse 4 and verse 5 and then he says when I told you the spirit would come upon you and then that leads to rejuvenation which is feeling better and confident about the direction in which they are heading and the assignment that's coming before them let me rewind and give you that they are reflecting sisters and brothers and reflecting leads to recapitulation and recapitulation leads to rejuvenation in other words sisters and brothers after they think about things they are then they then recapitulate that which they thought about and then they are rejuvenated and they are excited about the assignment before them and verse 12 says they returned to Jerusalem child of God all I'm trying to tell you this afternoon is to use this time of COVID-19 and as it is escalating in the state of Texas once again use this situation to reflect about what you are going to do as soon as this bad situation is over and by the time you finish reflecting and by the time you finish recapitulating how God can do the impossible in your life you then will experience some rejuvenation which is some excitement over your assignment and some excitement about your future and I wish I had two or three witnesses uh, in cyberspace that can testify Reverend I've been reflecting on how God has made so many ways in my life and I've been recapitulating on the way he has provided for me and it's led to rejuvenation which is excitement about my future and the direction in which God is taking me all I'm trying to tell you child of God is that you gotta use this COVID-19 this stay at home orders you gotta use this time to reflect on the goodness of God and reflect on your assignment that you are about to undertake after this is all over so you make the best out of a bad situation uh, first of all by using the situation to reflect just tell yourself I got to use this time to reflect not only uh, uh, do you use this time to reflect uh, but secondly you make the best out of a bad situation the last seven minutes by using the situation to strategize yeah yeah you got to use the situation to strategize I don't have time to read verses 12 13 and 14 uh, but the disciples have returned from the Mount of Olives and as Jesus instructed them they instituted watch this their own stay at home orders yeah I know Governor Abbott uh, does not want to institute that in the state of Texas uh, but Jesus tells them and he instructs them uh, you stay there until the Holy Spirit comes preach slaughter I feel like doing it they instituted their own stay at home order they instituted social distancing from the world they instituted self isolation according to verse 13 they are upstairs in a room for you uh, exegesis uh, brilliant people they are in the upper room where they were staying scholars describe that room in verse 13 as the top floor of a large Palestinian house these rooms sisters and brothers were often used as dining rooms study places for students or rooms that were sublet to the poor of society those in the room are similar uh, to the list in Luke chapter 6 uh, verses 13 through 16 with the exception of Judas Iscariot. The women that were included were Jesus' mother and possibly the wives of the disciples and most certainly uh, it was also the women that accompanied Jesus from Galilee and witnessed the crucifixion. Now I'm trying to figure out homiletically how in the world can anybody say women ain't got no business preaching when women have been there from the genesis and from the beginning of all of Jesus' ministry. Women have played a critical role. They were in the upper room practicing social distancing they were in the 
upper room with isolation. They were in the upper room with stay at home orders and they were in the room strategizing. Yeah, of uh, the group was strategizing and laying the foundation for the launch of the church. They are strategizing. They are laying the foundation for the church in the midst of a stay-at-home order. Y'all missing that? In the midst of their strategizing, uh, we notice a common theme. We notice a common thread. We notice a common denominator. We notice a common ingredient to their strategizing, and that common theme, that common thread that common denominator that common ingredient is that they were constantly in prayer yes uh, they were constantly in prayer the disciples uh, under stay at home orders they are social distancing and practicing isolation but one thing they are doing together they are praying Sisters and brothers, whatever you're strategizing, make sure you put prayer in the middle of that strategizing. Your prayer life should be better now than it's ever been, especially when you are in a bad situation. And I may be a little bit old-fashioned, but I still believe with every fabric of my being, I still believe that prayer still works. Oh, I feel good right there. I still believe that the prayers of the righteous still availeth much. I still believe if you want much power, you got to have much prayer. And little prayer equals little power. I still believe in prayer. Come on, give yourself a high five right now and say, I still believe in prayer. Any strategy that does not include prayer is a strategy doomed for failure. In the business world, the purpose of strategic planning and your bishop, Bishop McKenzie, loves strategic planning. The purpose of strategic planning is to set goals for your business and to develop a plan to achieve those goals. It forces you to ask yourself where your business is headed and what are the priorities for your business. That's what you should be doing right now. That's what I'm trying to convey to you right now. You ought to be using this time of Stay at home in isolation in the midst of your Congress. You ought to be strategizing about where your ministry is headed. You can't wait till this is over to strategize. You got to strategize right now. You got to start making plans right now. And when people ask you, what you're planning for? I'm planning for my church to grow right now. I'm not waiting till it's over to grow. I'm going to grow in the midst of COVID-19. I'm going to be a blessing in the midst of this pandemic. I'm going to strategize for the growth and productivity of my church. Then I wish I had some witnesses that can testify. I'm using this time to strategize for the future because I still believe with every fabric of my being that the best in Christ Jesus is still yet to come. Do I have any witnesses in the 10th Episcopal District that can lift your hands right now and tell God thank you that every plan is going to come to fruition tell him thank you you're not through with my church yet tell him thank you our finances can still grow in the midst of COVID-19 do I have a witness in this district that can give God praise right there oh don't wait till it's over you got a plan right now I'm, I'm done. I, I only have uh, three minutes left. Your bishop said 15, 20 minutes. I got three minutes left. Here it is, sisters and brothers. You make the best out of a bad situation by using the situation to reflect, use it to strategize, and also use, third of all, the situation to blossom. Yeah, yeah. You use the situation to blossom. I, I want to read this uh, to you. Verse 26. Uh, then, Acts chapter 1, verse 26. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell on Matthias so he was added to the 11 apostles <laughs> Judas hung himself Peter explains that all of this was foretold in Psalm 41 verse 9 even my close friend whom I trusted he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me 
You know, let me part parenthetically. Bishop, give me one minute over time. I don't know why Negroes get shocked when people turn on them. If you read your Bible, you ought not never get shocked about anybody turning on you because the Bible, even in Psalm 41, verse 9, say, my close friend who shared my bread also lifted up his heel against me. And then Psalm 109, verse 8, it says, may his days be few. May another take his place of leadership. After prayer, after strategizing, the disciples chose Matthias to take Judas' place. Matthias' name means what? Gift of God. See, we don't talk much about Matthias, uh, but we need to start talking about him because according, here it is, verse 21 and 22, Matthias had been there the entire time. Yeah, he, he's no Johnny come lately. Uh, he's been there from John's baptism to Jesus' ascension. Matthias has been there serving in the background. I'm getting ready to bless somebody. He's been there serving in the background and he has not complained about any notoriety. He has not been asking, when will I get to preach? He has not been asking, when will my name finally be called? He has not been asking, when will I get to participate in a miracle? He has not been asking, when will I finally get to lead? But he's been there the entire time like a sponge, soaking up everything that he can soak up. Y'all got to forgive me, but I feel a little something sneaking up in me in the middle of the day. Sisters and brothers, stop trying to bypass the training. Stop trying to bypass the preparation. Stop trying to bypass the tutorial phases of your life. And stop thinking your service will never pay off. But most importantly, stop trying to bloom before your time. All God is trying to do in your life, he's trying to make you a knockout rose. Y'all don't know what a knockout rose is? That's a rose that can bloom in season. And it can bloom out of season. It's impossible to knock a knockout rose out. And all I'm trying to tell you this afternoon, as I bid you farewell, that you are a knockout rose the enemy been trying to knock you out COVID-19 has been trying to get the best of you but here you are still alive you're still breathing still got activity of your limbs because God wants you to know that you are a knockout rose do I have a witness tonight that can lift your hands and make up in your mind that I'm going to be like Matthias no matter how long it takes I'm going to bloom at the right time I'll see y'all next time but are there any witnesses in cyberspace that can testify even in the midst of a virus I'm still going to blossom I'm still going to bloom I'm still going to become greater do I have any company on cyberspace that can tell God thank you for every ditch they dug tell them thank you for every lie they've told tell God thank you for every storm I've been through because if I never had a problem I would know that God could solve them I would know what faith in God would do so through it all I've learned to give him glory I've learned to give him praise y'all ain't happy yet but I want to remind you 10th district you get ready to blossom in the midst of COVID-19 in the midst of the virus lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted up and the king of glory shall come in 
bless his name. Your life ain't over yet. Your ministry ain't over yet. I declare over your church that the best is yet to come. I declare over your church that your ladder will be greater than your former. If you receive it, then shout yes. Shout yes. stand today to offer you an opportunity to form a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus as your one and personal Savior, that's the first opportunity I want to offer you. Secondly, if you don't have a church to call your own, I would like to offer you an opportunity to form a relationship with a church where you can work out your soul's salvation. God is waiting. We are waiting. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. And let the church say amen. I need your help today. Let's look for things to be thankful for. All of us have things to be thankful for. So I need your help uh, to find those one or two things that you're thankful for today. And I want you to share them. I want you to share your praise reports in the comment section. I want you to hit those little hearts and hit those thumbs up. I want you to share the good news of the gospel. We heard a good word from the Lord today. Come on, let's make a care call on someone who is vulnerable or isolated or send a care package to a senior. Drop it off at their front, at their front door. Come on, I need your help. Let's share those virtual hugs. Let's find a way to take the load off of another. Share a good idea with someone who needs it or a hack to get something done. I need your help. I need your help by sharing with us in the 10th Episcopal District. When you share your financial gifts with us, we're able to do a lot of things. We're able to provide GAP scholarships for students at Paul Quinn College. We're able to help with service projects in local congregations in rural and remote areas. You're helping us to continue to feed people and provide free testing and in the future going to help us get some school supplies and, and items that are needed by young people who are either going to go to school virtually from home or in the classroom. Come on, help us do the work of the Lord. I need your help today. Thank you for sharing and caring. And the information for Givelify and Cash App is at the bottom of your screen. Our benediction, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's peace be with you and bless you. And his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.